start. Uh, my name's Alex Busty, uh, Illinois Rivals. What kind of wanted led you to wanting to get back to the program like you did? Oh, wow. Um, well, it's been on both my wife and I's hearts for quite some time. You know, Ellie and I met here. Um, you know, I often tell the story that she turned me down about three or four times, which is true. But our first date was at Oven Basketball Complex. So that's pretty, you know, this, this university is very special to us. You know, I was, I had to make a decision, I guess you'd say, um, for my family and for my professional career to leave early. But uh, I gotta tell you, pulling down the tunnel just now, wow. I mean, I'm getting goosebumps and I can't imagine, you know, once the game starts, what it's gonna feel like. But, you know, it may seem like, you know, to people locally or, or however you want to say it, that it seems like from afar I haven't been that engaged, but I have been. It's just I haven't had the time, right? My life's been in overdrive. I'm trying to, you know, figure out how I'm going to stay in the NBA and, you know, make a career for myself and for, you know, taking care of my family. So uh, I've been very blessed. But, you know, in terms of the, the donation, um, I'm a, you know, I didn't grow up with a whole lot, close to nothing. And I just remember thinking and knowing that Champaign, Illinois, the University of Illinois basketball team, uh, it was like the Mecca to me, like literally the Mecca. And it, the first time stepping on campus was, I mean, I was in awe. You know, I, I was telling my family earlier as we were driving in, I had to tell the media, some of my family hadn't seen all of the campus and certainly the new things around campus. So last night I just took them on a little tour and it was like the, the most amazing feeling to be back, to be, you know, in such a special place to me and to share it with now my friends and family and people who have been with me along the way. So the donation, you know, financially speaking, it's gonna help, of course, but it comes from the heart more than it does really from my pocket. I've been very very blessed in that way and I'm very thankful. And so, uh, yeah, I feel we feel very good about it and we're very thankful to be back. We're very thankful for Illini Nation and all the support over the years. I mean, I'd go to games on the road and I'd see a, a wave of orange out of nowhere and they'd be like, hey, Myers, and I'm like, wow, this is awesome. So, yeah. Paul and Banks, the sportsbank.net. Um, I listened to the Fighting Illini podcast you did with Dion uh -huh. a couple times, actually, because um, it covered a lot of issues with mental health. And it was sure. interesting how you and Dion both opened up about how you got into seeking help. Yeah. So I have a two-part question. Number one, um, you guys discussed the stigma against seeking therapy that's starting to go away. So I would say, or what would you say to somebody who wants to explore that, but maybe still feels the stigma and is a little hesitant? Sure. And then secondly, what was the first step like for you? What was that first session like? How did you knew you wanted to seek help? Oh, well, okay. Uh, this is a very loaded couple of questions here, you know, as it pertains to mental health, because mental health, as I've learned over the years, is far more important than, you, you got to be in good physical shape and physical health, but, you know, for young athletes or for anybody, um, you know, there's this stigma that I'm okay, everything's fine, you know, I'm tough, I'm this, I'm that. No, we all go through tough parts of our lives. You know, it doesn't matter if you're rich or you're poor, you're tall, or you're short, you know, you play basketball, you work at the local bank, doesn't matter. We all go through really difficult times. And a lot of times we hide our pain, we hide our emotions, you know, we don't want to seem weak. Um, you know, and I've always been one to wear my emotion on my sleeve, but that was more seeking love and attention because that's what I needed to be fulfilled, I felt like. However, I was crumpling from the inside out, and it's a pretty scary feeling, but I'm thankful that now I finally sought out the help that I needed kind of holistically. I'd always dabbled, you know, I did some sports psych, which certainly, certainly helped my sports performance. But in the real life scenarios of, you know, how to get through tough times or, you know, how to deal with anxiety or depression and all these different things that I felt, you know, over my life, um, I had never fully kind of taken the leap, I guess you'd say. And Quite frankly, I'm sure we'll get to this, you know, there's the, there's the elephant in the room, of course. Um, the unfortunate incident um, was most certainly the hardest time of my life here over the last, you know, however long it's been, eight, nine months, I'm not sure exactly how long it's been, but, um, you know, when my family were starting to be attacked, my wife, um, I don't want to get into the 
quite frankly, gr gruesome, I guess, details of the messages and such that we were receiving, but um, it was a really dark time, to say the least. Um, It hurt me to know that I had, you know, made such a mistake as it pertained to my character. Um, you know, I can deal with over the years, oh, Myers learned stinks of basketball or this or that, but the one that hurt the most was an, an attack on my character. And I, and I certainly made a very, very big mistake. And I have over the last, however long since the incident, most certainly taken the steps to educate myself to um, be, in the Jewish community to learn from leaders, to sit with rabbis, to have Shabbat dinners, to um, you know, deliver meals during Passover, et cetera, et cetera. Um, again, we can get into this after this question if, if you guys would like, but it, it hurt a lot to have my, to primarily for my family and my wife to be attacked. You know, did I deserve to be punished? Sure. Um, would I wish cancel culture on anybody? No. Um, it hurt a lot. but. We're through it now, and you know when I when I sat the next morning uh, with Rabbi Penny down in South Florida, he said to me, "Myers, I can see right away." We're talking a couple minutes, and you're a good man. You made a mistake. I'm, I promise you, I will help you through this. I will help educate you. Uh, I'll, I'll have members of the community surround you and show you the love and support that you deserve. Again, you made a mistake. But people who are remorseful deserve to be forgiven and move on and learn from their mistakes, right? And I feel pretty darn good about the life that I've lived and the people that I've helped and will continue to help until, you know, my last breath. And so, uh, you know, once I, the incident happened, then we moved to Los Angeles because I was going to start off-season training. Unfortunately, um, I had a left shoulder surgery that was successful, but my right ankle surgery was not. This was in April, uh, and it's so everybody in the room knows there's plenty of NBA teams who want me and that I could be playing for right now, but I'm just not healthy enough. And, and did the incident help my case? No, but this time heal? Yes. Have I made steps behind the scenes? You know, sometimes, certainly prior to me coming out on social media about what I had been doing in the community, um, people wonder, like, well, what's this guy been up to? Maybe people around campus wonder what I've been up to here. You know, when I think about coming back to campus, it's such an amazing feeling, but I think to myself, like, gosh, I make such an own-head mistake, but I just want these people to love me, you know? And so I'll also say, and this is quite a long-winded answer, that after the game, I'm going to go um, meet with a bunch of the uh, Jewish students on campus uh, over at the Chabad and, you know, speak with them about my experience, what I've learned, you know, how, I, how, how can I help, you know, because this is what I was getting to earlier. When I sat with the rabbi, he said, Myers, trust me, this didn't happen to you. This happened for you. Now, this is 24 hours after the event. The next night, I was at his house for Shabbat dinner from 7 to about 12.30 a.m., meeting with people, learning, experiencing, hearing their stories, showing them how remorseful I was and how sorry I was, etc. So I say all this to say that I would always just pick myself back up, no matter how bad it got, no matter if I got... Uh, booed by the fans in Portland, no matter what I was experiencing, no matter how much trauma I experienced as a child. You know, life wasn't easy, but it built me into the man that I am. And I, I was introduced to what's called EMDR therapy, eye movement uh, desensitization reprocessing. Highly recommend it for anybody who's gone through something. Um, it allows you to essentially go back in time, basically, and kind of move past uh, a traumatic event or events or a, you know a time of your life and I probably don't got enough time to do it right now but one of these days I'll have to do it on camera and show quite frankly what it felt like what it looked like what the experience was like because it felt like all this pain and suffering that I had had from the inside out now this, a lot of people didn't know this they see Myers Leonard they say big tall strong you know NBA player making money blah 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 no I was not okay Beautiful wife, amazing life, played in, I mean, everything, everything, great family. I'm so blessed, yet I was in so much pain. And it took for what felt like the entire world was against me and a, and a, and a shot at my character and, and all these things to, for me to finally say to my wife who had asked me for, honestly, some years to just go see somebody because she, she could see the pain, but unless you're willing to go, 
and seek the actual help, you're never going to get better. And so I just remember sitting there in front of this woman and I said, look, I had my father passed when I was young. I've had some trauma and this and that, but I had an incident recently. And she said to me, look, the incident doesn't sound great, but I'm, I promise you it was from your childhood. That's where we garner our emotional stability, mainly from seven to nine. And then as we grow, we you know, continue to have these emotional awareness events, we'll call it. And quite frankly, I just didn't have that as a child. Times were tough. You know, and there's me, Mr. Tough Guy, and this and that, but again, I was crumbling from the inside out. So I did the EMDR therapy, and it, uh, I mean, I was shaking, crying, I mean, you name it. And it was like this, whatever had control of me was finally gone. I could finally take a deep breath, it felt like. You know, if I were home in Robinson and going over to my brother's house to see my niece and nephew who loved me and think of me as, I don't know, Superman, I suppose, or just Uncle Mars all at the same time, I'd cry and cry and cry because I'd be, you know, just, Cause, and I put myself back together, I walk in the door, I'd be going to an NBA game, guess what? Cry, 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 cry. I don't know why. I couldn't control it. There's nothing I could do about it. But then I put myself back together, act, act like Mr. Macho NBA player, and I walk in there, I do my best, and I leave the arena, and luckily I go home to a loving wife, which is almost it's like a, you know, it's like a band-aid over a situation. Of course, I, I you know, I, I'm making great money, I'm doing what I love. I love my family. You know, I come home to a wife who is incredible. However, it was never fully okay. And so I, I know that I, I, there's only one real good way to explain it is to give you some more background on it. And so quite frankly, anybody who needs help, wants help, please go ask somebody for help. Whether it's your family, whether it's your friends, whether it's you know professionally speaking, I think that's probably the route to go so long as you can develop a relationship with you know said person and they can understand what you've been through and speaking with them. And believe me when I tell you, the worst moment of my life that I'm incredibly regretful for has somehow turned in, into good. Not only, by the way, for me personally, in seeking EMDR therapy and, and getting through said trauma, uh, but also, by the way, I love all people. And now to, to have learned about a culture, a religion, and this amazing people, like, if you've ever spent time around me, I think people know I pretty well love everybody. And so to have now learned and become, I don't know, more aware of everything going on in the world and just having the opportunity to impact people through a silly, ignorant mistake of mine, somehow, you know, it all ends up ends up working out, you know, for the better, I guess you'd say. No idea if I actually answer your question, but I tried my <laughs> no, yeah, best. I, 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 I think you covered it pretty well. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Uh, hey, Myers, I'm Gavin. Thanks for addressing the elephant in the room. I'm curious, what message do you have for the community at Chabad today? You know what? Uh, number one and most importantly is to say sorry and say that I'm, you know, it's it was a huge regret of mine, of course. But, you know, Gavin, in... Um, learning a lot over these last few months. I have done, a, you know, rabbis have given me books. I've learned about the Rebbe. I've learned about this and that and the other. I've gone to Shabbat dinners. And I've, I've really, truly, emotionally and in physical, like, presence learned a lot. And one of the things that I heard on a podcast, though, however, was uh, someone said that evil and ignorance are like twins. Thankfully, ignorance is you can educate, and it's more prevalent. I can tell you from the bottom of my heart, and hopefully you and I can sit down and chat, or maybe you'll be over at the event today, this did not come from a place of hate. I was a fool. I made a big mistake, and it's one that I have worked incredibly hard behind the scenes to repair and will continue to do so the rest of my life, because that's what's important to me. You know, I've always done my best in every community that I've ever been in to give back, which is now why, you know, people are probably like, how the heck has this guy not been back to an Illinois game? But guess what? My life's been in overdrive. I'm trying to figure out my career. But now being back in this community, you know, I caught wind that, you know, well, Myers is donating, you know, should the, you know, why? Or, you know, what does the university think about this? Is it a little frustrating? Maybe. Sure. Of course I want people to just love me for the guy that I've always been, but I didn't make a mistake. Yes. Do I maybe need to explain that and be here in person? Also, yes. 
So as soon as I caught wind of that, I, ca I called Rabbi Penny in Florida and I said, hey, do you happen to know anybody? He's like, you're never going to believe this. So over at the Chabad, he had the connection there and I immediately on a three-way call. And he said, hey, would you come speak? And I said, absolutely. Now, don't get me wrong, I want to go to the game and I want to do that thing. And then I want to see the new facilities, which I'm incredibly excited about and where everything's going on this campus for academics and for sports and the men's basketball team. But also, it's important for me to come back in person and say, look, I made a huge mistake and I'm so sorry. Here's what I've experienced. Here's what I've learned. And also, I will say that I did a, I did a Zoom with the Miami Hillel, University of Miami, um, through a close mutual friend. And one of the most unique experiences throughout this entire thing, which there's been a lot of them, that I've had was actually asking them, students, to share their stories. Because, by the way, I, I, I grew up in Robinson, Illinois, a very small place, loving people, very hardworking, blue-collar people. But I wasn't exposed to a lot of different culture, religion, etc. I just wasn't. Does that make me a bad person? No. Did I make an ignorant mistake? Yes. But it's now, I now have a chance to not only impact my community back home and say, look, we, we got to be more aware. I made a silly mistake, but let's all be better. I, I, I got to face the cameras. I got to stand up with my chest proud and know who I am as a man and say, look, I made a mistake, but I'm willing to help. I'm willing to be a voice moving forward, and I'm also willing to help educate along the way. And so, long story short, about today, I want to hear from them. I'd love for them to ask me questions. Look, I can take the difficult questions. I can. I mean, I've done this for, talk about 24 hours after the event, I was lucky enough to have, uh, quickly, in Toronto, there's a, a Jewish man and his son, who I ended up being very close with. And every time we go to Toronto, I didn't have anybody up there. So he said, hey, Mars, would you give us some tickets? And I was like, of course, I'd love to. I always leave post-game passes, come say hello to he and his son. For his bar mitzvah, he called me, he's like, Myers, uh, would you do me a favor? And I'm like, yeah, you've been so great to me. What can I do for you? He's like, would you just sign your game shoes after the game and give them to my son for his bar mitzvah? And I said, I would love to. You know, this is a year and a half, two years ago. And so that's where the connection came. This is all very organic. It's not like, this wasn't forced upon me, by the way. Of course, I got fined by the NBA and this and that, but this wasn't, you have to do this, Mars. Here's a checklist of things you have to do. I immediately dove in and I said, oh my gosh, I made a mistake, I'm so sorry. So like I said, 25 hours later, I made me with Rabbi Penny. 48 hours later, I was at his house for Shabbat dinner for five hours. And then it was you know, visiting the Holocaust Memorial in Miami Beach and just being, just, it was one of the more emotional experiences I've ever had seeing. I mean, it's such an immaculate piece of work, but it's also very emotional. My wife walked around the entire thing. She was checking out on, you know, things on the walls. And this, I, I mean, as soon as I saw it, I mean, I froze. And it was like waterfalls from my eyes, man. Like, this is real stuff to me. Did I make a mistake? Yeah. But am I committed to continuing to educate myself and help others? Absolutely. And so, you know, did it really hurt? Yes. And was what I did very hurtful? Absolutely. But I can only hope for love and forgiveness, compassion, and to continue to show people my heart, which I've always done. And we'll always do. I'd love to ask you a few more questions, but I'll pass it. So I'll get you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi, Mars. My name is Kevin Prince. Uh, thanks for sharing that. But I was I want to change gears here. You mentioned the fact that um, you watch Illinois basketball, you follow Illinois um, because obviously you played here. But mm. have you had a chance to talk to Coach Underwood or talk to some of the players? I mean, just you know, for a bias about playing in the NBA. How much contact have you had with the team since you've been on the road? You mean since I've been in the NBA? Yes. Oh, absolutely. So uh, my best friend was the assistant strength coach here, which was pretty cool. He's now actually, I'm not going to lie, the head strength coach for Purdue, which is a little <laughs> interesting for me. But the um, line, line I need to win so they make no mistake about it. Um, but you know what? Every chance I've gotten, absolutely, I've been back. I've been in contact with Coach Underwood um, in the fall oftentimes, not often, but maybe I think four football games I've been to, so every chance I got, I'd go back and I'd speak to the team and I'd talk about, you know, where I was at in my NBA career. You know, a lot of times they'd say, well, how, how are you making it work? There's only two things. Every time I say this is the arena door, or the practice facility door in Portland or Miami, every time I walk in those doors, you're going to get a hardworking fellow and a great guy, period. There's been guys that have come and gone from the NBA who are more athletic and shoot better, faster, stronger, the whole thing. But I've always said that, 
I, I truly know and believe in my heart, the teammate that I've always been, um, my ability to communicate, certainly my ability to shoot the ball. Now, don't forget about that part. Um, you know, I don't dunk as much now as I did when I was in college, more threes. But uh, anyways, the point is, is I always was able to stick because of, I guess of unselfishness of, you know, setting screens and not caring if I scored or boxing out and making sure we got the rebound or spacing the floor so Dame, CJ, Jimmy Butler, Bam can have their opportunities to have more of a lane. You know, all the little things that the basketball fan who really knows what they're watching sees. Listen, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm an NBA superstar. I'm not. However, I've been very effective over my years in my own right. You know, the league transition to shooting. I can shoot. And so, quite frankly, it was always just be a great teammate, be a great guy. Yes, sir. No, ma'am. Open the door for people. Say hello to the front office staff, you know, the secretary. Everybody matters to me. And so that's why this weird incident has been the craziest thing I've ever experienced. And again, somehow ended up being for the better and a chance to, to face the cameras, and if, you know, so to speak, and be like, look, I made a mistake, yes, but it's not going to define me, no way, and I will continue to be better. And so um, I would always come back any chance I had um, and, and just, you know, give a solid message and continue to work hard. And shoot, when I was here, I didn't have a very successful freshman year. But that's because I was a scrawny, you know, seven foot kid who didn't really know how to play in the Big Ten. But then all of a sudden I trained incredibly hard going to my sophomore year and, you know, everything ended up working out for me. And so it's it's always so important to give back, not only with your words, but being there in person and sharing in your stories and your experiences and how, you know, how did I handle things when I was going through my sophomore year and being at the gym every night rather than at Cam's or Joe's. You know, that's the truth for me because I knew what I wanted ultimately for Illinois to win and for me to continue to grow and to someday take care of my family by playing in the NBA. And so that's what I did. And so every chance I get, you're darn right, I want to give back however I can. And now the last piece of that, which has been a long time coming, and I'm very proud of for my wife, Ellie, and I to give back financially and hopefully make a pretty big impact on, you know, men's basketball team and just the university as a whole. Last one with Scott right here. Myers, thanks for addressing some of these issues, but I have another basketball question. As sure. a center in the NBA, what's your perspective on Kofi Coburn as one of the most dominant centers to play here and in the country, and yet thus far, maybe not as valuable to NBA teams? Well, I'll tell you yeah, this. I'll tell you this. If I were to take off running at that pillar right there, it's probably what it'd feel like to run into Kofi. He's a big, strong individual, um, a force around the rim, of course. Um, you know, he and Fletch have done great work. Uh, you know, he's continuing to work on, as I understand, his free throw shooting and his touch and this and that. Kofi's going to be fine. He puts in the work. Um, you know, there's, you got to land certainly in the right uh, situation. You know, for example, I loved my time in Portland. Damian Lee, uh, excuse me, Damian Lillard, unbelievable leader, unbelievable player. The rest of the guys, I, I de de developed, excuse me, so many unbelievable relationships. But... From a basketball standpoint, the better situation for me was in Miami. I was like the fifth piece of the puzzle that they needed. They needed communication on the back line. They needed space. They needed a big that can shoot. You know, I, again, I don't, I don't care about numbers. Miami Heat, by the way, Heat culture, very real thing. I wasn't into the whole, oh, Myers Leonard needs to score, this or that. I don't care about my numbers. I care about winning. So anyways, you know, it's, it is about finding the right place, and, and that'll happen for Kofi, I do believe. You know, again, he's got to continue to put the work in. I would say that, you know, continuing to be able to knock down free throws is important. But he's working very hard, it's, again, to my knowledge. And, uh, you know, I'm always excited when there's, you know, a, a younger Illinois guy coming coming through the ranks and, you know, trying to make it to, to the next level. It's exciting to see, you know, 6-0 in the Big Ten. I mean, we're playing well. Kofi is dominant. I mean, good Lord, I was I looked at the infographic that was on the screen the other day. It was like him, Blake Griffin, I don't know, Kevin. Le I mean, we're talking about some serious comparisons here in terms of numbers. I think it's fantastic. Um, and so, you know, he's just got to continue to work. That's the thing. Every single day, I was thinking, like, man, I just want to take care of my family. Man, I want to play at the highest level. Like, what do I got to do? So my wife and I, by the way, I want to add this piece in because she kind of told me to. Uh, one of our favorite memories is uh, every night before home games, we'd go over to Oven and we'd shoot together. And that's, that's something special to us. So the reason I say that is to say when guys continue to put the work in, they're great teammate very coachable they want to learn 
you know, also for Kofi possibly watching, I don't know how much NBA stuff he watches, but that'd be a good idea. Understanding where he could fit, how can I get better? You know, asking the coaching staff, asking, you know, people who he trusts, like, hey, I gotta keep getting better. Dunking the ball and everything's great. But, I mean, quite frankly, when I was in Illinois, that's all I did was dunk and block shots. Then all of a sudden I was a three-point shooter in the NBA. We're talking about a total pivot. Um, so, happy for Kofi. He's dominant as heck. Um, he's go out there and dominate today. You know, got two big, big fellows over there uh, for Purdue. But it's gonna be, it's gonna be a fun one today. But I, you know, I hope the best for Kofi. Uh, you know, if you were to ask me some advice, I'll, I'll let you guys know when I tell him once I tell him. <laughs>